Alright, so in this video what we're going to want to do is we are going to compute the factorial of a number and we are specifically going to compute the factorial of a number in both an iterative and recursive manner. So we'll see how one can compute uh, the factorial in an iterative way, which means that we'll be using an iterative construct like a loop. Uh, and we'll also see how one can construct the factorial of a number in a recursive manner. So that is where the function will call itself. So first of all, if you're not familiar with the factorial of a number, it probably makes sense to start at that point. So let me actually just give an example of what the factorial of a number is, and we'll just start with uh, 5. So computing the factorial of a number is usually denoted by an exclamation point that follows the number. So this is read as 5 factorial. And 5 factorial really just amounts to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So it's just starting from the number that we're uh, given here and then subtracting 1 and do, doing this uh, cumulative multiplication all the way down to the number 1. So if we were to compute this chain of multiplications here, we would arrive at the number 120. So more generally, for any number n, any integer n, the factorial is defined as n times n minus 1 times all the way down to times 1. So that's kind of the more general uh, idea of what the factorial of an integer corresponds to. And what we're going to be doing in this video is computing both an iterative and recursive function uh, to compute this factorial. So let's start off with the iterative idea because I think it's more uh, straightforward and also easier to think about how you would you know, go about doing this in an iterative fashion. It's naturally quite iterative. So let's create a function called fact iter that takes as an argument an integer n and I'm just going to define n to be 5 here up at the top. So one thing that's going on here is we're really looping from starting from the number n all the way down to 1 and performing this cumulative multiplication here. So to loop we'll say for i in range to the number n and what we're going to do is we're going to start at n go to 0 in increments of minus 1. So if I just run this loop uh, let's just print out i so you can see exactly what this loop is printing out. Let me uh, call this function so that way you see what this is printing. So I'll say python factorial. So this for loop is starting at 5 and going all the way down uh, to 1. It's not getting quite to 0. It's, and then it's printing out 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So we have the numbers printed out properly, but now what we want to do is multiply the numbers uh, here instead of just printing them out. So before the loop, I'll define a variable that will store uh, the, the multiplications, and I'll call it x. I'll get rid of this print, and I'll say x times equals i. And then what we'll do is we'll return x. So if you're not familiar with this uh, shorthand notation here, this times equals, this is just a shorthand for x is equal to x times i. Just a shorter way of writing the same thing. So now let's print out this statement here and verify that for n equal to 5, we get 120. So that's great. We do get 120. So 5 factorial is 120. So that is the more straightforward iterative version of this factorial function. But what we want to do now is write a recursive implementation that also solves the same problem. So a recursive function is one that calls itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the recursive version of this function, which is pretty short, and then we'll step through exactly what is happening uh, sort of behind the scenes. So let me call this function fact recur, and it also takes in n as its argument. And what we're going to start off with is an if condition, which is going to be the base case. So the base case in any recursive call is, is the uh, scenario that occurs where the function kind of reaches its end. So in this case, 
the factorial is going to start at the number we're given and go all the way down to 1. So arriving at 1 is the base case of the recursive factorial. So basically if n is less than or equal to 1, we're going to just return 1. I'll say a little bit more about this later when we see an example if this is, an un if this is unclear. So otherwise, if we haven't arrived at the base case yet, we're going to return n times the recursive version of factorial of n minus 1. And that's it. That's the recursive implementation of uh, factorial. So let me just type in recur here. And first of all, let's just make sure this works. Okay, so it does. So now let's step through and see exactly what this function is, is doing. So what we're first feeding into this function is an argument of 5. We want to compute 5 factorial. So we're feeding in n, n equal to 5, into this function. And on the first go, it hit, does not hit this if statement because n is greater than or equal to 1, so this does not occur. So this else statement occurs instead. And so what happens here is we're returning n, which in this case is 5, times fact recur n minus 1. So what we're doing is we're passing in, we're returning n times, let's say, 4 factorial, 5 minus 1 factorial. So this 4 gets passed back up into this function as the argument. Again, this if condition is not hit, and we proceed to the else condition. So the else condition, again, n is 4 here, so we have 4 times the factorial of n minus 1, which in this case is 4 minus 1, which is 3 factorial. So again, 3 gets passed here, so we go back up to calling the function if condition doesn't hit, else condition does. 3 times 2 factorial, we pass in 2 here, go back up to calling the function, the else condition is hit since it's not 1, and we have 2 times 1 factorial, so 2 times 1 factorial, 2 minus 1. And then what we do here is we pass in 1 to this function, and lo and behold, the if condition here is actually hit because we've defined 1 factorial equal to 1, that is our base case. So in this instance, we return 1. Okay, so what's actually going to happen now is the stack has kept all of this in memory, and it's going to work backwards to compute the value of 5 factorial. So we're going to compute starting from what we know. We know our base case, which is 1 factorial is equal to 1. So we have that. We know that this is 1. Great. Now we move back up to this statement here. So we have 2 times 1 factorial. Well, we know 1 factorial is just equal to 1 because that's exactly what we've defined our base case to be. So this is really just asking, what is 2 times 1? Well, 2 times 1 is 2. So, okay, we have that so far. Great. So now we work back up here, and we have this statement 3 times 2 factorial. Well, what's 2 factorial? Well, we computed it below. <clears throat> 2 factorial is just 2 times 1 which is this, 2 times 1 factorial. 1 factorial is 1. So we know what 2 factorial is based on our previous computations. So this is just 3 times 2 factorial, which is 2. That gives us 6. So working on up here, we have 4 times 3 factorial. Again, we've computed 3 factorial already, because 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 factorial, or 3 times 2 times 1. So that is 4 times 6. That gives us 24. And one more computation here. We have 5 times 4 factorial. Again, we work back to figure out what was 4 factorial from our previous uh, calls here. So 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which again was computed from our previous computations here, which we know to be 24. So this gives us 5 times 24 which is 120, and that's precisely what 5 factorial is equal to. So this is kind of the unrolling of the recursive calls for the factorial function. 
Um, this is not a tutorial completely on recursion, but hopefully stepping through this recursive implementation of the factorial function uh, has, list, has, has lifted some type of veil and has made um, sort of recalling recursive functions a little bit more transparent to you.